Hello everyone and welcome to this session on encryption and decryption in cryptography. Cryptography is the study of securing communication from outside observers. Encryption algorithms take the original message or plain text and converts it into cipher text which is not understandable. The key allows the user to decrypt the message thus ensuring on they can read the message. Cryptography is how we can achieve more secure and robust connections to elevate our privacy. In this session you will be learning about encryption and decryption. So let's see the agenda for today's session. First we will be learning about what is encryption. Then we will be discussing about what is decryption. After that we will be talking about what are the different types of encryption. And then we will be talking about pseudo random keys generator. And then we will be talking about applications of encryption and decryption. So that's all with the agenda. Let's start the session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. What is encryption and how does it help? Encryption is a process of scrambling legible text so that only those with a secret code or decryption key can read it. Encryption can aid in the protection of data sent, received and stored on a device. Text messages on your phone, jogging records on your uh, fitness watch and financial information provided through your internet account are all the examples. Now let us talk about uh, decryption. Decryption is a process of restoring the unencrypted state of data that has been rendered unreadable by encryption. The system extracts and uh, changes the garbled data into sentences and visuals that are understandable not only by the reader but also by the system during decryption. The process of decryption can be done manually or mechanically. It can also be done with a combination of keys and passwords. Pseudo random keys. Encrypting and decrypting data, the technicalities behind the process, so we'll take a look at that. This begins with a cryptographic scheme. It will have a pseudo random keys that the algorithm generates and maintains. To execute this correctly, you'll need top of the line computational abilities. Unfortunately, malware creators are likely to possess some of these abilities. They'll keep working until they develop a program that can give their intended result. Indeed, virus technology has progressed to a point uh, that protection solutions now rely on data recovery rather than entirely blocking out the problems. Types of Encryption As known, there are major distributions of encryption. So let us take a look at that. Encryption keys are a set of numbers that are used to encrypt and decrypt data. Algorithms are used to generate encryption keys. Each key is a distinct and random. Asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption are two types of encryption systems. Here is a breakdown of how they differ from each other. So symmetric encryption encrypts and decrypts data with a single password. Now there are two types of symmetric encryption algorithms block algorithms and stream algorithms. Some examples of uh, symmetric algorithms are AES that is advanced encryption standard and DES that is data encryption standard, Blowfish etc. While for encryption and decryption, asymmetric encryption employs two keys. The data is encrypted using a public key that is shared among users. The data is decrypted using a private key that is not disclosed. Some of the algorithms used are Defi Hellman Key Agreement Algorithm, RSA Public Key Algorithm, ECC, etc. Types of Encryption as known, there are two types of encryption that is symmetric and uh, asymmetric. So let us take a look at that. Encryption keys are a set of numbers that are used to encrypt and decrypt data. Algorithms used to generate uh, encryption keys. So to generate these password, we use algorithms. Each key is distinct and random. Asymmetric encryption and uh, symmetric encryption are the two types of encryption systems. Here is a breakdown of how they differ. Symmetric encryption, uh, encryption and decryption data with single password. Now there are two types of symmetric encryption algorithms, block algorithms and stream algorithms. Some examples of symmetric encryption algorithms are AES, DES, Blowfish etc. While for encryption and decryption, asymmetric encryption employs two keys. The data is encrypted using a public key that is shared among users. The data is decrypted using a private key that is not disclosed. Some of the algorithms used are Defi Hellman Key Agreement Algorithm, RSA Public Key Algorithm, ECC, etc. How about we take a look at some real life applications of encryption? We are going to talk about five major ways everyone benefits from encryption. The first application is ATM Cash Withdrawal. Just a quick info, guys. 
If you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPAT has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. To safeguard your PIN and other banking information while the transaction is in transit via the network, banks use something called as hardware security module that is HSM encryption technologies. HSM encryption comes in a variety of forms, but its primary purpose is to encrypt each person's 4 to 6 character PIN when they use the ATM. The PIN is then decrypted at the HSM, which allows the transaction or money withdrawal to be executed and validated. If hackers intercept network in data in transit, they won't be able to get their hands on the pin thanks to these encryption mechanisms. The next application of uh, encryption and decryption is in uh, storing files. Dropbox and Google Drive, these are the two popular file storage platforms with 500 million and 800 million users respectively. So they place a strong emphasis on security. Obviously, if the platform didn't provide a secure environment to save crucial information, images and videos, it wouldn't be used by millions of users, both individuals and corporates. This means that all the files are encrypted into cipher data to keep users safe. Dropbox security protocol even states that they divide each piece of data into several smaller parts and encrypt these smaller pieces of data one by one. Both platforms safeguard files in transit as they move between servers and apps and at rest, which is really beneficial for all the millions of users as it ensures that all of their sensitive information is secured, maintained online. So the next certification is in SSL certificates. The majority of us engage in internet browsing on a daily basis. Secure socket layers, also known as SSL certificates, are used to encrypt data on the internet. SSL protection is a security solution that uh, website owners can purchase to improve their site's uh, security. The green padlock and the HTTPS in the URL are indicators that the website is encrypted. On websites where uh, users enter sensitive information such as credit card numbers, phone numbers and IDs, an active SSL certificate on the web server is extremely useful. Messenger Applications According to TechCrunch, in the fourth quarter of 2017, WhatsApp had 1.5 billion active monthly users. This equates to 60 billion texts sent each day. It should come as no surprise that WhatsApp prioritizes its customers' privacy which is why the messenger program includes complete end-to-end -end encryption. That means your text, images, videos, voice messages and files are all protected. Only the individual with whom you are communicating can read what you are sending. End-to-end -end encryption also means that WhatsApp cannot read any messages because they are kept in encrypted format on their server. The best part is that WhatsApp automatically encrypts all messages by default and there is no way to de uh, disable it. Now let us look at the last application that, that is emails. To safeguard the user, uh, webmail apps such as Gmail and Hotmail use the SSL encryption described before. It is crucial to understand however that the SSL encryption does not encrypt email text. Without delving too much further into technological jargon, the National Security Agency, for example, would still be able to intercept your emails in readable text form. End-to-end -end encryption email solutions like the Proton Mail and Counter Mail are becoming increasingly popular among privacy-conscious customers. Thousands of people have already switched to comparable encryption protected email services. Every sent and received email is encrypted into ciphertext using this email software. As a result, even if an email is intercepted, anyone without the decryption key will be unable to read it. So to summarize this video, encryption is a process of encrypting data so that it is concealed from or inaccessible to unauthorized users. It can assist safeguard uh, private information and sensitive data as well as improve the security of client-server communication. In other words, even if an unauthorized person or entity has access to your data, they will be unable to read it. So thank you for watching the video till the end guys. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPAT has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts.